Hello to the world and to the kingdom citizens. I greet you in the precious holy name of Yeshua Messiah. Yeshua HaMashiach, who said in his word, John 8 and 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hi, I'm Dr. John Curry, Ambassador of Pan-African, and welcome to the Embassy of the Kingdom of Heaven on Earth. If you want to follow this podcast, please subscribe to JC Global, Embassy TV One, reading the bell and hit the thumbs up button. I have a repost that I want you to see. This was done roughly two years ago, and it's entitled The Black Holocaust, White Christians, Gatekeepers of White Supremacy. The Black Holocaust, White Christians, the gatekeepers of white supremacy. One day I was teaching a class and talking to some of my students in IPA Academy. And through all of the violence that has been going on as far as black males being shot and killed, a question was asked to me by a 12-year-old black male. His question was, why do white people hate black people so much? I began to answer the question, which I thought was an easy question. But after I stumbled in my thinking and in my mind, I found that the question was much more meatier than it appeared to be in simplicity. So I began to go inward and say, well, why do White people hate black people so much. And I start to think about slavery. I start to think about civil rights. And I start to think about some of the struggles that our people have been going through. Only to discover that all of those were just mere symptomatic of the condition that black people are in. So therefore, the question that still rings in my mind that I feel that is necessary to answer this 12 year old is that why do white people hate black people so much? The black Holocaust, white Christians, gatekeepers of white supremacy. And again, the question, white people, why do you hate black people so much. The scramble to colonize the indigenous people of Africa as Berlin, Belgium Conference of the Congo ended in 1884. Belgium, Great Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Portugal, and Spain those European nations struggled to save their own lives while spreading global disease. They traveled to Africa with guns and germs, bluebronic plague, influenza, malaria, yellow fever, smallpox, and more. If it were not for the compassion of the great kings and queens of the African civilizations, those European nations would have died in the cave they came from. When the European nation arrived in Africa, they was amazed at what they saw. Great civilizations already established. They thought the continent was dark and uncivilized, only to discover the Africans were the only civilized people in the modern world for thousands of years. The European nation then sent over to Africa white racist eugenicists, anthropologists, archaeologists, scientists, linguists, historians, and etymologists in order to do a colonial rewrite in the whitewashing of African history. They call us a disgrace, all the time plotting to take our place. These false claims were the beginning of the promotion of white supremacy worldwide. From the 1400s even until now in every sector of human life and even to the heavenlies, making God, Jesus, angels, and the whole heavenly host 
all white. Most whites are under the illusion about white supremacy in America and throughout the world. It is this fantasy that has hypnotized many whites by their own whiteronized historical lies. In essence, whites are the true victims of their own watered-down history. The notion of white supremacy is not genetically possible intellectually, socially, morally, spiritually, or philosophically. It has no basis, period. As blacks, we must be aware of the trickery of the white Christian liberals and the brutality of the white Christian conservative. They are one and the same, with the same sick agenda. Two voices, one face, white supremacy. White Christian liberals will march and protest with you, have pulpit exchanges with you, have race relation and diversity workshops with you, while passing laws to destroy you. On the other hand, white Christian conservatives will just keep their boots on your neck singing, let's make black slaves again. Therefore, as blacks, we must keep our families intact, aggregating with one another while watching out for landmines and traps that are being set up against us in our communities. These traps are drugs, guns, unemployment, and poverty. Tools that are being used by design so we can commit crime and violence on each other, thus filling the empty cages of the new plantation, America prison industrial complex. Be it white liberals or white conservative, blacks get the same, nothing, no matter how we vote. If America is a Christian nation, why is she so evil when it comes to black people? So the question is for white Christians, to be or not to be a Christian, which is a paradoxical conundrum for you. That's the question you must answer. It was white racist Christians who kidnapped us from our homeland and worked us as slaves from sun up to sun down as muscles fell off bones for over 400 years without restorative justice. Thus the black holocaust, black blood on American soil, as white Christians in the Bible in one hand and the rope in another, perverting the word of God for selfish gain. It was white Christians who passed laws declaring black people as sweet of human, animals and beasts of the field. It was white Christians with the sacred order, holiness, white is virtue, and the lynching of blacks was a Christian practice. Yet it is these same white Christians today who say they love God whom they have not seen, but hate black people who they see every day. White people has promoted the hatred of black people worldwide. Wherever there are black people, racism will exist. But First John 4 and 20 says, If a man say I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he say love God for whom he has not seen? White people are afraid of the retribution of black people, and they should be. As blacks, we will never be slaves in America again. We built this nation, and we ain't going nowhere. America has never been an all-white nation, and never will. The word of God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. The so-called serious, conservative, evangelical, racist Christian movement will support the devil as long as he continue white supremacy. It appears that 81 to 90 percent of white Christians and Catholics are racist. Many white pastors are trying to play God as they anointed Donald Trump as their Messiah, knowing that he's a racist, a moral degenerate, and a pathological liar. 
these white Christians will do anything in order to maintain white supremacy. But Jesus said in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captive, and to recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. America cannot be a truly a Christian nation without Christian virtue. Jesus also said in Matthew 5 and 44, but I say unto you, love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. America cannot be a Christian nation without the love for all people. We cannot legislate, mandate, or dictate morality. Morality must be taught, and it must be taught with love. Jesus also said in Matthew 6 and 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. America cannot be a Christian nation if we don't seek God first, keep God first in all of our decisions. I believe it was David that said in Psalms 127 verse 1, Except the Lord build the house, they that labor in vain that builds it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wake it but vain. Jeremiah 17 and 5 says, Cursed be the man that trusts in man, and make his flesh his arm, and whose heart depart from the Lord. Donald Trump cannot save this nation. Only God can do that. You can build a wall that can reach heaven, but if the foundation of that wall is anchored in the hate of hell, therein will the nation fail. Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. White racist Christians have proven that they would rather go down in the anarchos of history being white rather than being right. They have thrown the Bible away, choosing to serve themselves and not God. Speaking from an overexemplified disposition with a trickle-down perverted love from a heart of hate. I believe it is said in 1 Peter 4 and 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? One of the most sick and twisted things in this world is in the spectrum of colorism. The lighter the skin tone, the greater the privilege, promoted by white racist Christians. And this is why Sunday morning is still the most segregated time in our nation. Thus, white Christians are the gatekeepers of white supremacy. Therefore, my prognosis, white Christians and white Catholics are suffering from an extreme level of pride and arrogance self-righteousness and narcissism, jingoism and epicureanism, tribalism and totalitarianism, racial battle fatigue and magical thinking, having the Messiah complex with constant hallucinogenic rehearsal as they see themselves as the only Messiah and savior of the world. White people, you think you are fighting black people, but you are fighting the God of black people. You are fighting a war that you will never win. God is on our side. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So the question is that continue to linger throughout all of a bloody antiquity. White people, white people, why do you hate black people so much? JC Global Embassy TB1